Hi folks, today we're going to talk about Raspberry Pi OS Trixie and uh, its improvements compared to Bookworm edition. We're going to start with an impressive new desktop look. Then we're going to discuss its internal features which enable a much higher performance for some applications compared to Raspberry Pi Bookworm edition. Finally, we're going to compare its performance to other two most popular operating systems for Raspberry Pis Windows 11 and Adrian 16. I'm just gonna switch it on and I'm gonna use my original Raspberry Pi monitor for the start so for us to see how it starts how much time does it need to start as you can see monitor is already on and we are starting into graphics user interface you will see that there is a different graphics team as you can see here but it's all so small so why not connecting the second monitor let me show you I'm gonna connect the second monitor which is much bigger so let's see wow it's detected a new monitor flickered a little bit and this is now the first monitor this is much bigger as you can see so we can have right now two monitors why not and uh, we can also have a new version of LibreOffice which may be very good for your uh, home office why not so uh, is the mouse here it is so it's from the outside you can immediately notice that there is a new team so there are much nicer icons there is a new photo on the background it's really iconic and it is easier to control you have a new control center application which combines many features that were previously scattered through different kind of control menus. There is also a new bookshop where Raspberry Pi official magazine subscribers can get early access to different titles which are later available free of charge for everybody else. There are two variants of Raspberry Pi OS, a barebone light version and a full desktop version. There are a number of packages that can be installed on the light version of Raspberry Pi Trixie like Granny Editor, Tony, Python Environment or Raspberry Pi Connect. SD card copier, bookshelf, text editor and image viewer. Even control center can be additionally installed. However, desktop version contains most of these packages and only a few can be additionally installed, but many can be removed if you don't need them. For those who would like to learn how to program Raspberry Pi, there is even an impressive SenseHead simulation, which includes an LED display and a number of sensors. It's all represented on screen and you can set the sensors values manually. So you can observe how your application will collect their inputs and how it can represent them on the simulated hardware. If you buy the physical hat, your application would actually work the same. There are also a number of examples which will enable you to learn how you can quickly connect to arbitrary hardware from your Python application. There are 32 and 64 bit versions of Trixie, which makes it suitable to be installed on any Raspberry Pi model starting from Raspberry Pi Zero. The only Raspberry Pis that cannot install Raspberry Pi Trixie operating systems are Raspberry Pi Pico and Pico 2. Let's now discuss the internal features of Raspberry Pi OS Trixie that are not so obvious to an unexperienced user. The year 2038 is probably the most notable bug in Raspberry Pi OS Bookworm. It is similar to Millennium Bug that plagues Microsoft Windows at the turn of the century. On 2038, a 32-bit time value would overflowed and and the time would loop back to the January 1st, 1970. There is also a new scheduler which allows for lower latency for applications that are starved of processing time. There are improvements to asynchronous input-output operations which allows for faster data transfers. An optimization of work use allows for a better CPU cores utilization which speed up programs execution in multi-core CPUs within the system on chips like PCM27 in Raspberry Pi 5. A very important feature is also placement of temporary files in a virtual drive in RAM, which is similar to what Microsoft Windows does. But this may also have some drawbacks, because if you just unplug your Raspberry Pi as you are used to do with your Bookworm edition, then you may lose some files or some files may be damaged. And as we know, Microsoft Windows is strongly recommended to be shut down, not just unplugged, because there is a great probability that it might not start normally again or it may get severely damaged. 
What about new devices? Are there any new devices supported through USB ports on Raspberry Pi when running Trixie? As a matter of fact, they are. Recently, I've had a problem with my 4K camera operating in web camera mode, which only worked on Windows 11 or any kind of Windows starting from Windows 8, but it would not work on Raspberry Pi OS Bookworm Edition. But what was even more intriguing was that when I've installed my Raspberry Pi 500 Plus with Windows 11, the 4K web camera actually worked normally, and I was even able to use it with the inbuilt camera application. As I've installed Raspberry Pi Trixie, it started to work normally, just like in Windows. Finally, let's compare the performance of Raspberry Pi Trixie to Windows 11 running on Raspberry Pi and Android 16 running on Raspberry Pi. These uh, operating systems are very capable and are in some sense comparable, though Raspberry Pi Trixie should be the most capable regarding hardware compatibility. The speed of operation is still tremendous in Windows 11, but uh, we have to take into account that Windows 11 currently only supports 1K graphics, but Raspberry Pi OS Trixie supports up to 4K, which is the maximum that Raspberry Pi 5 can support. Android 16 also supports at least 2K resolutions. However, Windows still seems to be the best when building a digital audio workstations from one or two or more USB audio cards which can be combined to a very capable virtual audio card with numerous audio inputs and numerous audio outputs. Android in this regard is very poor because it usually detects only the last audio device plugged in and it doesn't care whether it's an input or output audio device. It just uses it as a whole and it disconnects all the other audio devices or it is not using them if you don't have a special application. The same through for video cameras and other video sources. So this is quite a big drawback with teleconferencing. There should be improvements in the future in this regard. Raspberry Pi OS Trixie is the best regarding compatibility to all the hardware, but certain features may be hard to access through text consoles and text configuration utilities, or even configuring the configuration files in text editors. So Windows is, in this regard, in many areas, much more user-friendly. However, Android is still the easiest operating system to enable your Raspberry Pi to share its connections like a smartphone. Tethering can easily be achieved through USB-C port. However, you have to have means of powering your Raspberry Pi through 40-pin expansion port, like in this video, or you have to have a special kind of adapter to allow powering as well as communicating through the USB-C port. Android 16 is also great when you want to install computer games from Google Play Store to your own computer, not playing them from the internet, like on Raspberry Pi OS, because there are very few games that you can actually install on your Raspberry Pi OS, especially 3D games. But on Android there are a variety of games, though there are many more games for Windows, unfortunately most of them require much better hardware than it's available with Raspberry Pi 5 architecture. If you've liked this video, please press like and subscribe buttons and don't forget about the notification bell. If you really, really like it, then hype it as well. See you in the next video. Bye.